In this video, I want you to get some experience working with story problems or word problems involving permutations as well as combinations. So we're gonna go through these together and as we go through them, I wanna talk about some of the different formulas as well as some of the different definitions. We're gonna be working with uh, permutations, combinations, factorials, probability in a few of the problems as well as the fundamental counting principle. So let's dive into the first problem and we'll kind of explain this as we go through it. Uh, for the first one, it says, how many ways can you arrange all the letters in the word math. So what do you think for that problem? Well, there's a couple different ways to do this problem. One way to do it is to use the fundamental counting principle. And what you would do is you would diagram this out. You'd say, hmm, there's four letters. How many choices are there for the first letter? So imagine if you were picking these letters out of a bag. Well, there would be four choices, right? And then once you pick one of the letters, there's gonna be three left. So you're gonna have three possibilities for that second letter that you pick for the word two, and then one. And if you multiply those together, you're gonna to get 24 different so-called words involving the four letters in math. Now notice there's uh, no letters repeated, and we'll talk about some of the um, problems later on where there's repetitions of a particular letter. But for this one, it's just gonna be four times three times two times one, and this is the fundamental counting principle. You just see how many choices in each category and you multiply them together. Uh, the other way to do this is to use this permutations formula here. And what you could do is you could say out of four objects, you're picking, like P for picking or permutations, four P4. You're picking four out of four. And so if we put this into the formula here, you can see that this number that comes in front is our N. That's gonna be four factorial over four minus R, which R is four, so that's four minus four factorial. So this comes out to four factorial over zero factorial. And you wanna memorize that zero factorial is actually one, but with four factorial is you start at four and you multiply consecutively down to one. So this would be four times three times two times one, all divided by one, which is the same thing we got here, 24. So two different ways to look at that one. For number two, it's very similar to number one, it says, how many ways can you arrange just two of the letters in the word math? Okay, if, what do you think for this one? A couple different ways to do this as well. You could use the fundamental counting principle. You could say there's four choices for the first letter. Once you pick that letter, right, how many choices are there for the second letter? There's only three, so four times three is 12. The other way to do that is to use this a permutation formula here out of N objects. How many ways are there to pick R objects where the order matters, okay? So the order is important with permutations, not with combinations. So for example, this one would be 4P2, which is four factorial over four minus two factorial. So that's gonna be uh, two factorial in the denominator, four factorial in the numerator. And if we expand this out, four times three times two times one over two factorial, which is two times one, you can see that these are canceling and we just get four times three, which is equal to 12, the same thing we got here. So either the fundamental counting principle uh, will work or using this NPR formula will work as well. Okay, for number three now, let's try this one. It says eight runners are running in a race. Uh, in how many ways can a gold, silver, and bronze medal be awarded? So what do you think for that one? So the question you always wanna ask yourself in these problems is, is it a permutation? Is it a combination? Does the order matter or does the order not matter? Well, say for example, runners A, B, and C versus like C, B, and A. So here you'd see A gets the gold medal, whereas here C is getting the gold medal. Same three people are, are finishing in the top three places, but it's a different awarding of medals. So this would be a, definitely a permutation. And what we can do is we can say out of eight uh, runners, you're picking three, okay, or eight permutation three, which is equal to eight factorial over eight minus three factorial, which is eight factorial over five factorial. And if you expand this out, you get eight times seven times six times five, all the way down to one. And five factorial is five times four times three, all the way down to one. So these are gonna cancel all the way down. It's just gonna be eight times seven times six, which makes sense because if we were to use the fundamental counting principle here, we say how many ways are there to award like a gold medal? Well, out of eight runners, there's gonna be eight ways to do that. But once you award that gold medal, there's only seven runners left to you know, win that silver medal, right, seven, and then six left for the bronze. So eight times seven times six, you can see we're getting the exact same result. And just to, in case you're doing this on your own, let's get a, an answer here, that's 336 different 
ways or outcomes. So we haven't gotten into any probability problems yet, but here we're just talking about the number of possible outcomes. Okay, number four, see if you can do this one. We've got 20 basketball players form teams of five players in each team, right? Each player can play any position. How many teams of five uh, can be formed? So what do you think for this one? When you form these uh, teams of five people, does the order matter? Well, in this case, because every player can play every other position, the order doesn't really matter. We're just looking at that particular group of five people. So when the order doesn't matter, we're thinking combinations, okay? And in this case, you can see out of the 20 players, we want to choose five of them where the order doesn't matter. So it's 20 combination five, which if you use the formula here, it's gonna be 20 factorial over 20 minus five factorial. 5 factorial. Now notice this R value right here. See the R value is, see, this is the only thing that's different between the permutation formula and the combination formula. And what this R factorial is doing is it's dividing out all the multiples, all the multiplicities you could say. So 5 factorial, there's really 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. There's 120 different ways of arranging 5 players but they're all gonna be on the same team, so you only count that team once, not 120 times. So that's why we're dividing out these multiplicities here. So if we simplify this further, this is gonna be 20 factorial over 15 factorial times five factorial. And you don't wanna make the mistake of saying, oh, this is like 75 factorial or 20 divided by five, that's four factorial. It doesn't work that way. You have to actually span this out 20 times 19 times 18 times 17, et cetera. Or you can use this combination key on your calculator. It's under the probability menu. So I'm gonna do 20 math probability, go down to the combination. So 20 C5, and this is coming out to 15,504. 15,504 different ways that you could form these five um, player teams out of 20 basketball players. Okay, so for number five, a little different problem here. The letters A, B, C, T, U, and V are all placed in a hat, okay? Find the probability that you draw exactly three letters and you can spell the word cat. Okay, so now we're transitioning a little bit to talking about probability. And so the definition of probability is the number of successes, meaning the number of things that you want, divided by the total possible outcomes, okay? So it's it's like if you were to spin a spinner and you say, what's the probability I land on an, an odd number? One, two, three, four. Well, there's two odd out of four possible, so it'd be two over four, which is one half, that's your probability. So it's what you want or successes out of the total. So in this case, what do we want? Well, we want the letters C, A, and T, right? So we're basically saying out of those three letters that we want, how many ways are there to choose all three? And out of two, uh, not 20 letters, but uh, six letters, how many ways are there of choosing three letters? So this gives us the total possible of outcomes of, or the ways of choosing three letters where the order is not important because when you get these letters in your hand, you can arrange them any way you want. So we don't want to count them. Um, the ordering is different. We want to just count it as one group of three letters out of six. And so 3C3 is going to equal one and 6C3, let's see what that comes out to, six combination three is uh, 20, so you have a 1 20th chance of being able to do this. Now, this kind of makes sense because out of three, how many ways are there choosing all three? Well, there's only gonna be one way of doing that, or you could say, you know, there's only gonna be one way of getting the success of drawing these three letters, cat, right, out of the 20 different ways of drawing three letters out of, out of the six. So different ways to think about it, but combinations because the order doesn't matter, probability because we're trying to figure out uh, the chance that this occurs. Number six here, it says, at a party with 30 people, if each person shakes hands with every person, how many total handshakes take place? Okay, this is kind of a common problem, but imagine you're at a party and you're trying to shake everybody's hand. See, the thing is when two people shake hands, how many handshakes is that? Well, it's just one, right? So you don't want to double count. And so what we're thinking here is we're thinking of um, out of 30, how many ways are there choosing two? Okay, so 30 C2. So A and B, B and A, that's the same one handshake. So that's why we're not treating it like a permutation, but rather a combination. And 30 C2 is gonna be 30 factorial over 30 minus two, which is 28 factorial times two factorial. So let's go ahead and do that on the calculator. That's, uh, let's see, 30 math 
C2. All right, so that's 435 handshakes. Okay, number seven, let's see if you can do this one. It says you and three friends are running for a four person committee. 100 people are running. What is the probability that you and your three friends win the four seats? Okay, so interesting question. So the first thing is, we're trying to basically figure out that you and your three friends, that's four people, win the four seats. There's only gonna be one way that that can happen, or you could think of this as out of the four people that you want to win, you know, that you're a group of four, how many ways are there of choosing all four? So that's only gonna be one way. But then out of 100 uh, people, how many ways are there to choose four for this committee? Now, how do I know that it's combinations and not permutations? Well, when you're talking about a committee, it's not like there's a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. All the positions are basically the same. So when you interchange the, the ordering, it doesn't really matter. It's the same committee. So you don't want to count those as separate uh, outcomes. That's why we're using combinations. So here we said 4C4. There's only going to be one way that you and your three friends win. And then how many ways are there of choosing 4 out of 100? Let's see what 100C4 is. Combination 4. That's a big number here. We have three, nine, two, one, two, two, five. So one out of about almost four million. Okay, so uh, slim chance, right? Number eight now, it says, what is the probability that in a standard deck of cards, you are dealt a five card hand uh, that's all diamonds? Okay, so you have to be familiar with cards to do this problem, but you want to be... Um, dealt a five card hand that's all diamonds. So in this case, we're thinking about probability. What's the number of successes? Well, out of the 13 diamonds, how many ways they're choosing five? So when you do the combinations, this is how many are in that group of what you want, the 13 diamonds, but you're trying to choose five out of that 13. So how many ways could that occur? But it's probability divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, there's 52 cards in a standard deck. How many ways they're choosing five of those 52 cards where the order doesn't matter. So again, combinations. So let's see what that comes out to. So 13 combination five, okay, is 1,287 and 52 combination five is a big number here, 2598960. So that's, that's your probability and you could reduce this down or even write it as a decimal. Okay, so for number nine, it says your teacher draws two names out of a hat to lead a class discussion. What is the probability that you and your best friend are chosen given that there are 30 uh, students in your class? Okay, so again, we're just assuming in this problem that you just have one best friend, right? Not two or three, okay? Um, but it says, what's the probability that the two names drawn are gonna be you and your friend? Well, again, there's only one way that it could occur, or if you want, you could think out of these two people that you want, you and your best friend, how many ways that they're choosing those two, so 2C2 two or 2 combination 2, which is 1. Uh, but then how many ways are there of choosing uh, two students out of the 30? That's going to be 30C2. Again, we're using combinations because the order doesn't matter. It's not like it's a president, vice president, uh, etc. So let's see what that comes out to. That's uh, 435. So it's a 1 in 435. Okay, so I'm trying to give you a good sampling of all these different types of problems that come up when you're working with permutations, combinations, probability, etc. So number 10 is a little bit different. It says, how many distinct ways can all the letters in the word geometry be arranged to form a new word? So we're using all the letters and we're making a new quote unquote word. It might not actually be a word. It's just kind of, we're calling it a word. So the first thing we want to figure out is how many letters are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. So when you arrange eight items, how many ways are there to do that? Well, that's going to be n factorial or eight factorial. You could say, well, there's eight choices for the first letter and then seven choices for the second letter and it's six for the, you know, it's like you're picking a letter out of a bag and there's eight letters. So all the way down to one. So we could say this is eight factorial. But we have a different situation here from the first problem we did where we talked about the word math. Here you can see there's actually two uh, e's. Okay, so if, if I was to take this E and this E and like interchange them, it would still look like the word geometry. It wouldn't be distinct. It wouldn't be unique. It wouldn't be different, right? So we don't want to double count, you know, when I switch uh, these two E's. So to avoid double counting, what we have to do is we have to divide by 2 factorial. Now 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. It's just 2 because there's two different ways. If there was 3 E's, we would divide by three factorial, which is three times two times one, which is six. There would be six different ways that you could arrange those like three E's 
but it would still look like the same word. But in this case, there's just two e's, so we're dividing by two factorial. And let's expand this out. So this would be, let's see, eight times seven times six times five, all the way down to one, divided by two times one. And let's see what that comes out to. So eight factorial uh, divided by two factorial. So it comes out to 20160. So 20,160 uh, ways that you could do that. A common example with this one that often comes up is like the word Mississippi. So Mississippi, actually there's 11 letters, that's 11 factorial, but there's four S's, uh, there's four I's, and there's two P's. So you'd have to divide by four factorial, four factorial, two factorial to divide out those multiplicities. Okay, so let's look at number 11 now. It says how many four digit numbers less than 7,000 can be formed such that the number is odd? Okay, so what I like to do sometimes with these problems is I like to diagram it out, okay? It's a four digit number and it has to be less than 7,000. So the first digit has to be what? It has to be a one, two, three, four, five, or a six. It couldn't be a seven because then it wouldn't be less than 7,000. So that means there's six uh, choices for this first number. Now I notice I didn't mention zero because if it was zero, then it would only be a three digit number. Let's jump to this last number here. If we want it to be odd, the only way it can be an odd number is if the last digit is odd. It has to be a one, three, five, seven, nine, right? So there's five different outcomes for the last digit, but these two middle digits, they could be zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine. So zero through nine, if you add those up, there's actually 10 possibilities for the second digit and 10 for the third. So if you multiply these together, you're gonna get six times five is 30 times 100, which comes out to 3,000 which you probably could just figure that out you know, uh, just on your own. You could say, well, from 1,000 to 7,000, that's 6,000 numbers, half of them are odd, 3,000. But sometimes the problems are a little bit more complicated, so I wanted to show you this process of using this fundamental counting principle. Okay, for number 12 now, it says, in how many ways can a 10-question true-false exam be answered, assuming that all questions are answered? This is also a common problem that comes up. Uh, Again, if it's a 10 question exam, imagine those 10 questions, how many ways can you answer that first question? Two ways, right, either true or false. How many ways can you answer the second question? Two ways, right, true or false. How many ways can you answer the third question? Two ways, true or false. So what's two times two times two times two 10 times? Well, that's gonna be two to the 10th, which is equal to 1,024 different ways that you could answer this true false uh, test. Okay, if there's a problem that you have a question about regarding permutations, combinations, or probability problem involving permutations and combinations that we haven't covered yet in this lesson, go ahead and put it in the comments below. And if you're watching this video, see if you can answer those questions that people are posing down there in the comments questions, uh, in the, in the uh, comments. So for number 13 now, it says, in how many ways can five people stand in a circle? Now, this is a little bit more complicated problem than if we say how many different ways can five people stand in a row? See, if it was in a row, it'd be like this. They could stand five choices for who stands here furthest to the left. Once that person stands there, there's four people to compete for who's gonna stand right here, and then three, and then two, and then one. And you would multiply all those together and you'd say there's 120 different ways. The problem here though is, is that when you're standing in a circle, okay, kind of imagine my five, five fingers here, it's like a dial or a knob. Like if I was to rotate, like that, right? The thing is you can turn that knob five times, right? Until you get back to the original position. But the whoever's standing on your left and who's ever standing on your right, when you keep turning like this, they're gonna, you're gonna be in the same, the same relative position to one another. So what you have to do is you have to divide by five. So if you wanted a formula, this would look like n factorial divided by n. So in this case, there would be 24 different ways it can happen. Now, when you're doing these problems with some of these larger numbers, it gets a little bit abstract. And what I recommend is to pose a simpler question. Maybe say, for example, the people are like this, uh, A, B, and C, right? Well, there's three people, that would be three factorial, which is three times two times one. There's six ways of ordering them in a row. But imagine if it was in a circle now, like A, B, and C, not much of a circle with three people. But you can see that, like, so you can turn it like this, one, two, you know what I mean? You can, you can rotate it. So that's, that's the idea here on this, um, on this problem. So let's look at number 14 here. It says, in a shipment of 10 items where three are defective, in how many ways can you receive four items where two are defective? 
Okay, so this one's a little bit uh, challenging in the sense that there's 10 items, three are defective. I'm just gonna say three are bad. So that means that seven are good. So let's say seven good, three are bad, but you're trying to receive the shipment where you're gonna get four items, right? You wanna find out how many ways there are to get two defective or two bad. That means that two are good. So the way this would happen is there's out of the seven good, how many ways are there to choose two times out of the three bad, how many ways are there to choose two of those three bad ones? And then you're gonna multiply these together. So again, remember that first number, that's how many are in that group, seven good. Here, how many ways are there to choose two out of seven where the order doesn't matter, it's not important. And out of the three bad ones, how many ways are there to choose two where the order is not important? So let's go ahead and multiply those together. So we have uh, seven choose two. Let's see here, seven choose two, which is 21. And three choose two, which is three. So that means there would be 63 different ways that that could occur. If you wanna see more uh, examples as well as more of an e in, uh, detailed description of all of the permutations, combinations, factorials, fundamental counting principle, probability, follow me over to this uh, video that I did earlier here and uh, we'll go through some more examples together.